Dubai and Pushkin, related by inspiration. Moscow, Chistoprutny Boulevard, a typical Pushkin place. In his time, it was called Ogorodnaya Settlement. Five minutes away, there is the Bolshoi Karitonevsky Lane. Pushkin lived there when he was a child. The beloved female character of the poet, Tatiana, comes to this place too. Here is the quote. The cart stopped at the gate of the house on the Kariton Valley. Although during the time of Tatiana, there was no boulevard, only a wasteland. A stream flowed there, forming a pond. Tanya sits by the window. The dusk is coming to an end, but she does not distinguish the fields around her, an unfamiliar courtyard right in front of her, stable, kitchen, and fence. Eugene Onegin, Alexander Pushkin. But today, if Tatiana looked out of the window, she would see a boulevard, alleys, and a monument to her by. A monument to a man thanks to whom the beloved female character of Pushkin became the beloved character of the Kazakh steppe. This is a coincidence. Alien to each other by fate, but they were related by inspiration. Pushkin and Abai. How did the poet change the fate of Onegin? Abai came up and wrote a plot on his own that wasn't in the original version of Pushkin's Eugene Onegin. How did Pushkin's poetry save the Abai family? We can't perceive fiction as a historical fact. Why did Pushkin's Tatiana become part of Kazakh folklore? This music, the song of Tatiana, became very popular throughout the steppe. Difficulties in translation, mysterious coincidences, and the Kazakh soul of Russian Tatiana. Two genuses, Abai and Pushkin, related by inspiration. Chapter 1. Pushkin's Poetry of the Steppe. Western Kazakhstan. The address is easy to find. It is even difficult to make a mistake. This is the house where Pushkin used to live. Pushkin arrived in Uralsk alone in 1833 on the 21st of September. As you know, Alexander Sergeyevich was not allowed to travel abroad, and it wasn't easy for him to travel even to the most remote corners of the Russian Empire. For example, Uralsk in the early 1830s of the 19th century. He waited a long time for permission. I imagined how Pushkin visited the city. As a guest, he took away the plots of songs from Oralsk. And now the poet is not just a guest in Oralsk, he's also a resident. Pushkin's poetry travels around the steppe from one end to the other. This is a poem by the Kazakh poet Zhuban Moldegaliev. And who translated Pushkin? Zhuban Moldegaliev, Tayer Zharokov, Murza Kurdulatov, Ahmet Batusinov. But the first one was, of course, a bai. Thanks to him, Pushkin's poetry was translated into Kazakh for the first time. I think another reason why he's so dear to the Kazakh reader is because of one of the first authors whom Abai decided to translate. Sime, the house where Abai stayed, one kilometer to the embankment of the Irtish and a thousand kilometers to the Neva River. They seem to be so far apart, but yet so close. Poetic soulmates. When Abai got acquainted with Pushkin's works for the first time is unknown. According to Awezov's version, this happened in Semipalatinsk, in the house of the lawyer Andreev. The poet at the time was only 20. Abai saw several luxuriously bound books on the shelf. What is this? Books of state laws, he asked with respectful curiosity. The grey-haired master of the house answered, no, these are books written by a poet. These are Pushkin's books. Mukhtar always of the path of a buy.
However, there was no lawyer Andreev in real life. He was a fictional character, although he had a prototype. Nevertheless, the first acquaintance with Pushkin's poetry most likely did happen in Semipalatinsk, and perhaps earlier. Mukhtar Awezov wrote that Abai attended a Russian parochial school for several months. In the second half of the 19th century, Pushkin's works were read by school children in the educational book of Russian literature. The most popular were Song of the Prophet Oleg and Demons. So, during student days of Abai, Pushkin was already a classic. However, it's unknown exactly what the young poet used to read. Maybe his biographer could tell us more. Awezov's archive was confiscated during the arrest, and so it's still unknown where the rest of it is. Maybe the materials related to the details of Abai's childhood and his adolescence vanished with that part of the archive. The only thing is known for sure is the place and time where Tatyana started to speak Kazakh. It's believed that Abai did not go outside the Semipalatinsk region and, in general, mainly traveled on official business. He was a Volost ruler. Most of his life he spent in Akshoki town, which is not far from Zhidabai. According to Awezov, songs and poems written by Abai instantly spread across the steppe. They were immediately memorized and written down. The entire winter, Abai, with the help of dictionaries, tried to work on translations of Russian books. In the spring, when it seemed that he got a sense of the new world, he decided to take Pushkin's works. He began to translate Pushkin's prose, and while reading, he felt a great enthusiasm because he understood absolutely everything. Pushkin revealed to Abai all the wealth of the Russian language. Mukhtar Abauzov, The Path of Abai. That's how he learned to speak and write in Russian. Looking at his poems, it's obvious that he was fluent. Well, then there was Onegin. According to Awezov, the exiled Eugene Makhailis was the one who gave Abai Pushkin's poetic novel to read. Where did Pushkin's Tatyana start to speak Kazakh for the first time? How did Abai change the fate of the St. Petersburg playboy? What kind of amazing coincidences were found? Chapter 2, Tatyana's letter. The Russian girl Tatyana experienced the same sadness as Kazakh young girls. So distant, both in terms of language and customs, a famous literary female character, and Kazakh women turned out to be so similar in thoughts, fate, and the feelings they experienced. Mokhtar Awezov, The Path of Abai. St. Petersburg, Moika number 12, the last and most famous address of the poet. The Museum of Alexander Pushkin. This portrait is considered to be the hallmark of our museum, because among the many portraits of Pushkin, this is one of the best. This is a portrait by Vasily Trapinin, painted in 1827. Pushkin had just returned from exile, and in St. Petersburg, he was a celebrity. He was very popular. The first chapters of the poetic novel Eugene Onegin had already been published, including Tatyana's letter. I'll sing you a new song about a girl, Tatyana's song. What is this song? It was written by the Russian poet Pushkin and was translated by Abai. Tatyana, according to Pushkin, is only Russian in her soul because she writes the letter in French and Alexander Pushkin allegedly only translates it into Russian. So the Kazakh version is something like a translation of a translation. From the granite banks of the Neva River to the snow-capped peaks of the Genghis Mountains. In 
the winter of 1887, the great Russian Akin Pushkin first entered the territory of the Kazakh steppes, leading his dear Tatiana by the hand. He brought the joy of his songs to these open spaces, and the character of Tatiana was perceived as a close, dear relative to everyone. She taught the young Kazakh hearts the language of sincere feelings that no one else spoke in the Kazakh steppe. Mukhtar Oezov, The Path of Abai. He felt something close to his heart in these poems, felt it through his heart and delivered it to the readers in his verses. It should be noted that Abai's works are extremely complicated for translation, as well as Pushkin's works. It's extremely difficult to convey all the beauty and melody of the Kazakh language. Here are Tatiana's words. I'm writing to you, what's more? In Abai's interpretation, they sound different. Here is an approximate translation. No way out, no strength, but I have to say it. How can I let you know about this? I'm burned by the flames and I'll accept any burden. According to literary scholars, when translating, Abai started some kind of poetic contest with the author it's a sort of itis on equal terms. His translations are his own view, creating rethinkings of the author's ideas. He did the same with Lemontov, Krylov, and Pushkin. Of course, there were loose translations. The Encyclopedia of Russian Life, that's what they called the novel Eugene Onegin, at the beginning of the 19th century more precisely the Encyclopedia of Aristocratic Life. But after half a century, everything has changed dramatically. Many concepts became simply outdated and explanations were required. He understood that if you translate the whole novel, it will not be clear to the Kazakh listener. It's incomprehensible and therefore uninteresting. Abai did everything differently. Genius. Pushkin wrote many poems, and Abai just took Eugène Onegin, a poetic novel. Do you know which plot he took? The plot about love. The romantic vision of being was reflected. It gained a new momentum, because Abai used this plot through the prism of life and contemporary reality of the Kazakh Aoul. Abai translated it as an epistolary novel in letters, and it wasn't by chance. The form of a greeting letter, a salim letter, was popular in the steppe. The poet was already over 40, not a young man anymore, yet he was able to convey feelings in a bright voice of a young girl. You were a wounded tiger. I am a roe deer cub. You nearly killed me. The claws are hurt to death. He read Pushkin's poems with his own poetic heart, wrote Oezov. They are not just translations, but an inspired retelling of key events. Abai translated only seven chapters of the poetic novel and decided to write the last one, the eighth chapter, Onegin's last word, himself, changing the fate of the protagonist. Pushkin. Abai even wrote a story that was not in the original version of Eugene Onegin. And the main character is not like Pushkin's playboy at all. He's better, more noble and purer in his soul. And his trouble is that he's terribly lonely and his heart is wounded. There's no reason for a lonely person to live. In Abai's version of Eugene Onegin, the main protagonist dies. I so wanted to return. I remember you called for me. The black earth is like a mother to me. She opened her arms towards me. I have no place in this world if you're not with me. And that's what's amazing. In Pushkin's version, Onegin also calls for death. Why am I not wounded by a bullet in the chest? What should I expect? Longing? But these lines remained only in draft copies. They were not included in the novel. And Abai didn't know about them. A mysterious, perhaps even a mystical coincidence. Or the kinship of two genius souls.
why did Tatiana not only speak but sing in Kazakh? How the song brought back Abai's love. And how the lines from Eugene Nanyakin were written. Chapter 3, The Song That Brought Love Back. A living room, sofa, pantry, a room for flowers, all for the convenience of the St. Petersburg celebrity. They say that Alexander Pushkin was satisfied. Adaman's house was for special guests of honor. Today, it's the Museum of Pushkin. This is an inkwell and this is a paper holder. Feathers came from here. If you got inspired and wanted to write something, you could. It's known that Pushkin wrote down the feathers literally till the end. He wrote, as his friends said, with short leftovers. Pushkin always had a stub. He had such a habit, he wrote down all his thoughts on scraps of paper wherever he could find them and then put them in a jug. And when he came back, he took all the pieces of the paper and this way a brilliant work appeared. Quill pen, scraps of scribbled paper, an inkwell. This is the Jidabai Museum of Abai. Here in this room, Abai, secluded from everyone, wrote his poems. But not everything is so simple. Abai's writing instrument, for the most part, it was used for official papers and letters. The contemporaries of the poet and his biographer, Mukhtar Awezov, said that he wrote his works most often without using a quill pen. Sometimes he took a pencil in his hand, sat down mumbling something under his breath and wrote new poems. From the memoirs of Turagul Kunanbayev. So, most likely, Tatiana's letter was written in this way. By the way, Pushkin also liked to write using a pencil lying on the couch, and part of the poetic novel Eugène Onegin was written with the help of a pencil. You cannot command your inspiration, and in the case, pencil is more convenient, especially somewhere in the field. You could write anywhere you wanted to using a pencil, sitting in a yurt at a round table, a dastakhan, or lying down in the step. Well then, music appeared. In Russian Tatiana, sung half a century after the release of the novel, in the opera of Tchaikovsky. In Kazakh, it happened earlier. Abai himself was a composer. He wrote music to his translation of Tatiana's letter. I mean, and his music, Tatiana's song, became popular all over the steppe. The letter had universal success. And what's interesting, the song of a young girl was often performed by men. There are countless memories about this. One of the first is researcher Dmitri Lvovich. While traveling in the Turgai region, he went to rest in the yurt of a simple Kazakh, Nurpais. And he was incredibly surprised when he suddenly heard Pushkin's poetry to the accompaniment of the Dombra. And this was not the only case. Researchers of the time, who came here from Russia, were surprised that ordinary, mostly illiterate Kazakhs sang the song, Tatiana's Letter. In 1889, in the Kokand Volost, the singer Adel Khan offered us to listen to Tatiana's letter to the accompaniment of his violin. To our surprise and question, how did he know about this letter? Adel Khan, not without pride, pointing to himself, explained that Russians had the same singer, Akin Pushkin, who wrote about Tatiana's love to Onegin, which was expressed in the letter. Adel Khan sang to us several translations from Lermontov, explaining that Lermontov was dissatisfied with life, while Pushkin approached it like a sage. From an article by Alekhan Bukekanov.
The film, Songs of Hawaii, written by Mukhtar Wezov and directed by Grigory Roshal. Tatiana's famous song is sung by the equally famous Rashida Koishibayeva. This Pushkin knew the heart of a Kazakh girl very well. It's known that Aigarim, the second and beloved wife of Abai, was a good singer. There was such an episode in Awezov's novel. Abai and Aigarim didn't just have a fight. It felt that there was a wall between them woven with silent insults and reproaches. And suddenly, Aigarim sung Tatiana's song. Abai sat pale. He felt a chill run through his body. Suddenly, he impulsively hugged Aigarim and covered her eyes with kisses. Aigarim, honey, you found me again with your songs and tears. Pure and sincere, you came back to me. After all, it was your soul that poured out in Tatiana's longing. Mukhtar Oezov, The Path of Abai. The song brought the love back. But wherever there was such an episode or not, in real life is unknown. We cannot perceive fiction as a historical fact. However, there were documented facts too. The episode of the Encyclopedia of Russian Life has become a Kazakh folk song and entered the encyclopedia during a prize lifetime. How many variations of Tatiana's song were there? Who saved the melody of Abai? What brought the geniuses together? Epilogue, one great poet to another. A full geographic description, table and road book. At one time, it was very popular. The encyclopedia included 19 volumes. The article dedicated to Kazakh poets, volume 18, 1903. And there is a mention of Abai. One should name the author a representative of the new direction of Kazakh poetry, who is notable for many poems graceful in their form and poetic content. He is also the author of a good translation of a poetic novel, Eugene Onegin. Thanks to him, you can hear many Samapalitinsk singers perform Tatiana's letter. Excerpt from the Encyclopedia. Many singers sang Tatiana's song to their own melody. In different regions of Kazakhstan, each singer performed it in his own way. Songs from Eugene and Ergen are now sang as our own Kazakh folk songs. For the first time, Tatiana's song was set to music by Alexander Zatayevich. In 1922, in Orenburg, in two versions. The third was written by Latif Hamidi, and another version is considered to be the correct one and was performed by Makien, the granddaughter of Abai. She was a wonderful singer, and Turagul, the poet's son, taught her many songs to preserve his father's melodies in the original form. When they talk about the importance of Pushkin for Kazakh literature and for the Kazakh people, the most important thing is his unifying principle. Only a poet of a great talent can translate the works of another talented poet. Only a genius is capable of translating another genius, wrote Barjan Momushalu about Abai's translations. Spiritual kinship, and these lines, written by Pushkin, sound like an appeal to a Kazakh poet. Since ancient times, the sweet union connected poets. They are the priests of single muses. A single flame excites them both. In fate, they are alien to each other, but they're kindred by inspiration. Alexander Pushkin.